All right, let's start the procedures review today, and we're gonna go through what you need to know uh, to review for the ART procedure section. So this includes 64 questions, so it's actually uh, around 32% of the exam. There'll be 18 questions from head, spine, and pelvis, 21 from thorax, abdomen, and GI studies, and 25 will be from extremity procedures. This section is more than one fourth of all the questions on the exam. So success on this section, or success on the boards can be improved by giving a lot of effort to this section. So if you can, anytime you sit down to study, pick up an area of procedures. Just take um, some anatomy, take um, some centering rays or obliquities, something like that. If you set aside two hours on Monday to study, say x-ray equipment, take 20 or 30 minutes, review finger to elbow, and then start your x-ray studying, something like that. Um, you want to divide the material into sections. If there's 22 or so questions on extremities, so don't skip that. That's a big amount. Anatomy, know your anatomy. All right, that's gonna be one of the key things for boards. Some keys to success for learning procedures would be flashcards that have brief descriptions or flashcards of images. If you um, are artistically inclined, you could draw your pictures. Something like that. Many of the projections are gonna be redundant. You're gonna to start to notice this now that as your seniors and you're graduating, you're gonna to start to see similarities between exams, central rays, um, positioning, when in doubt, go 45 degrees for oblique, right? And when in doubt, center to the part, like elbow, you're gonna to center to the part. Humerus, you're gonna center to the part, right? Go some textbook centering. I understand some textbooks may vary, um, but try not to let something at clinical confuse you. If your clinical site does something off textbook, um, try not to let that sort of sway you with your answer. Review your terminology. You know this terminology, but it's going back to textbook stuff. So medial, anterior, distal, proximal, position versus projection. Know your landmarks. We're going to go over that in a second. Um, Go over obliques, which oblique posterior equals that oblique anterior. So RPO is the LAO, something like that. Recumbent versus decubitus, and you guys know anytime you see decubitus or horizontal beam, those two go together. If you are having trouble deciding on your answer, I want you to picture in your head the resulting x-ray when you're at clinical. Um, is it a spine exam? Is the patient lateral? Are they oblique? What am I seeing? Is it a lateral lumbar spine and you're seeing circles? Are you seeing the foramina or are you seeing the zygopophyseal joints? When do you see those? And if you close your eyes and picture the patient standing in a lateral position for a C-spine, do you see circles? No. When do you see the circles on the C-spine? For the oblique, right? So watch for that. Some of my tips, as always, is to read the question slowly twice. Read it once, your normal speed, stop, go back, read the question slowly. Read all the words to the question, every single word, because that's usually where the key is. The answer is usually in the wording of the question. Um, read all the answers. Don't click too quickly, even if you remember this question from one of your practice tests or one of your review uh, materials, be careful, watch for that. Try not to memorize those questions. You wanna make sure where what you're reading is the correct answer. Watch for the instructions also. It may say, select all that apply. So if you don't read that and you answer the one answer you saw right off the bat, you might have missed some. So slow it down. Always go with your first answer. It's almost always correct. Don't change your answer. Answer the question and move on. 
You can flag it if you want to come back to it, but I don't recommend it. Every question you flag starts to sit in the back of your head and you start to ponder it and you worry about it and you're thinking about it and if I should change it and what you're not doing is giving the question in front of you 100% of your efforts. So unless you're absolutely 100% sure that that answer was wrong, never change it. Stick with it. Move on. Don't watch the clock. Don't worry. You're going to have more than enough time. All right, positioning topics listed on the ART content specs. Uh, so here are some topics for positioning, procedure adaptations. That means changes, right? Do you have to make any changes for any of these on the list? Anatomy, obviously, they can ask you anatomy. And then image evaluation, so part positioning or two part image receptor alignment questions. Review all your terminology. Go back to basics, guys. I know you know all of this stuff, okay, all these terms, but go back. Go back and review it. Again, study anatomy every section if you can, if possible. All right. Go back to your anatomy terms, those tubercles, sulcus, fossa, groove, body planes. I know you think you know it, but just do a quick review. Landmarks, know your landmarks. These are would be excellent to make a flashcard of. Um, I would do picture flashcards of these and written out. All right. So I would do two options. Body habitus. Make sure you know your body habitus. Know the different types. Be able to pick them out in an image and also by the percentage as well as gallbladder location and stomach shape. Usually it'll specify a J stomach. It'll ask you where the gallbladder is sitting, something like that. Um, or it's these terminology or the percentages. Make sure you know all of those. Could you pick out body habitus um, by your image? If you had these four chest x-rays, would you be able to identify which is each body habitus? If you had these stomach images come up, would you be able to identify body habitus? Think about that. 